Amen. And humble me, Lord. I thank God for blessing our late pastor, Bishop Dara Barrett. Amen. Who imparted unto us wisdom and understanding of the word of God. He said, don't sing that song no more. Amen. And ask the Lord, if I'm too high, dear Lord, bring me down. Amen. And humble me. No, we don't want the Lord to bring us down because there's a possibility if he bring you down, you'll never get up again. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible never say nowhere written that we should ask God to humble us. Amen. But we, the Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and he will exalt you in due time because God resisted the proud. Amen. But he gave grace. Amen. To the lowly, to the humble. And we're here tonight as we approach you. Amen. We're seeking and asking the Lord for his direction. Amen. That he will impart unto us that which is needed. And tonight I avail myself. Amen. To the Holy Ghost as a vessel needed to be used by the Lord. And I'm looking to him because the Bible said the Holy Ghost knows the deep things of God. Amen. And I found out something as we get ready to go. I don't believe the church know how blessed we are. We don't just have one intercessor. We have two that intercedes for the church. That is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. So the church can never go wrong uh, if we have either one of them interceded for us. Because the Bible said we don't know, amen, what to pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit does. Uh, and the Spirit makes intercession to God with groanings that cannot be uttered. And the Lord Jesus Christ, being our high priest, who is at the right hand of God, he also make what? Intercession on behalf of the church. So tonight I'm leaning and I'm depending because if I come before you without the Holy Ghost sanctioning, then my coming to you is in vain. And I don't want to waste time, and I don't want to waste your time coming before you in vain. But while we were away, when I have Deacon alone, he's the only one tonight with me. Amen. But the Bible said, where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, the Lord said, I will be in the midst. So we, I'm one, he's two. Uh, and I'm trusting that the Holy Ghost is to my left uh, to be my guide and my instructor. Amen. To guide me along the way. So we thank God, amen, for Deacon Malone. We want him to go and we want him to get St. John chapter number 14. Amen. And before I start off, I'm going to give you my scripture tonight, my topic. We want to deal with the rapture. We want to deal with the rapture. I was away, the Lord blessed me and my family to go away about two weeks ago, if I recall right. And before I went, I had already told some that I were, I decided not to go. But as that time approached and time began to move forward, I began to feel a press that I needed to get away. And I began to pray about it and I began to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, you know my circumstances, but I said, Lord, I don't mind serving you and doing whatever I have to do. But if you allow me once a year to take my family away, amen, to be able to spend some time with them and to be able to relax my body. Because every pastor needs a few days for themselves. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then you wear yourself out and for your family. Because sometimes a family can be lost in our job and what we do when we forget about our family. Mm -hmm. But I thank God, amen, with all humility that he afford us, amen, that privilege and that blessing, amen, that we were able to go away as a family 
And I want you to know, amen, I enjoy those few days. Praise the Lord. Not having to think about getting up and going to work. Not having to think about this. Not having to think about that. Amen. Just to have that time. But as I was there, amen, where we were in Atlantic City. Amen. A beautiful place. Amen. But while we were on vacation, I felt this press. I felt this longing in my heart to spend time before God. And as I began to spend time before the Lord, it was one of those things that you couldn't stop eating because the Lord just kept feeding my spirit. He kept feeding my spirit. Amen. And I stayed in my Bible. I stayed, amen, in a place that I can listen, I can learn, amen, because time is winding up. And the Lord placed, amen, a few subjects or topics in my heart to deal with that I feel it is necessary, amen, for the church world today, amen, to understand and take us back to that which is, amen, of importance. That which is necessary because sometimes we're busy about things that are not necessarily necessary or important. They are, amen, to a certain extent. But now, amen, sometimes we forget uh, why we come into the body of Christ and what we are living for. But the Lord began to deal with my heart. And by the help of the Lord, we got about four topics we got to deal with. Amen. And because I'm only able to come before you once a week, maybe the Lord bless, might be twice a week. It'll probably take us about two to three months. Amen. In order to finish up this teaching. But we're looking to the Lord. And I believe it is time for us to be reminded of the hope of the believers. All right. So tonight, we want to go right away into the book of St. John chapter number 14 the words of our lord and savior jesus christ st john chapter 14 amen verse number one through verse number three and i asked deacon malone if he would read with us st john 14 verses one through verse number three let not your heart be troubled. All right. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking unto his 12 apostles. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. If you believe in God. Believe also in me. He said, now, if you believe in God, believe also in me. So he's saying, now, if you believe in God, it's wonderful. But you must also believe in me. And I'm going to explain to you why, amen, not should you just believe in God, but you must also believe in Jesus. Read. In my Father's house. In my Father's house. Many mentions. Are many mentions. Deacon Malone, I believe he made it clear. He said, in my Father's house. Now that lets you know that Jesus said that he had a father. Is that what you just read? That's what I just read. Praise the Lord. In so he's not his own house. father, right? So in his father's house, he said, now I have a father and in his house are many, are what? Mansions. many mansions. Read. If it were not so, if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, now if it were not so, I would have told you. Read. I go to prepare a place for you. He said, you. now, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, I'm going away. And I'm not just going away just to go away and forget about you all. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Read. And if I go and prepare a place for you. Now, he said, if I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. I will come again. And receive you unto myself. And receive you unto myself. That where I am. That where I am. There you may be also. Amen. So the Lord Jesus, amen, left the disciples there with a promise. And with hope. 
He said in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, uh, Jesus is saying, I want you to be with me. Amen. In that prepared place, and many have preached this message before, uh, a prepared place for a prepared people. So Jesus left them with hope. He said, I got to go to the Father. I must go to him. And not only that, but Jesus said, now, at one point, he looked at them and said, no, if I don't go, then the comforter cannot come. But he said, now, it's important for me to go. But I will not leave you comfortless. Uh, while I'm here with you, I am your comfort. But the time is drawing near now for me to depart out of this world. But he said, when I am gone, don't let your heart be troubled. Uh, he said, I'm going away for a good reason. And the reason is, is to prepare a place so that wherever Jesus is, uh, wherever Jesus is residing, if you let me say that way, that's where he wants his apostles to be along with him. And I thank Jesus for making that promise. And Jesus has never lied. Can anyone find in the Bible where Jesus told a lie? So his words are true. So if he says he's going away and he's coming again, he will come again. Now, I want you to come along to read and then I'm going to say something. Keep reading, D. And whether I go, ye know. Whether I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And how can we know the way? You telling us you're going, uh, but we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? We need some guidance. We need some direction. How can we get there? How can we know, amen, the way? All right, read. Jesus said unto him. Jesus said unto him. I am the way. Jesus said, now I am the way. The truth and the life. Now I want to make that very clear. Jesus never said, I am the ways. No. Uh, he said, I am the way. In other words, there's only one way. When I speak of one way, there's only one way to get to God. There's only one route that you can take. There's only one door that you can take in order to get to God. And Jesus is that door. Amen. If you go in any other door and fail to come to the door, Jesus, amen, you will not end up in heaven. You must come in at that door, and Jesus said, I am that door. Uh, by me, if any man enter in, if any man come through me, there is no way that that man would be lost if he come in at the right door. Now, this building has like three entries. One back there, one to my right, and another one to my left in my office. Now there are three doors to this building that you can come in. Praise the Lord. But now, when it comes to heaven, there is only, matter of fact, yes, there's only one way that you can get to heaven, and that is through Jesus. So he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the what? The light. I No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus told them, he told Thomas, I am the way. Now, many churches today fails to speak on the rapture. And because they fail to speak on the rapture, iniquity or lawlessness has a bond. When there is a church, your people need to be reminded of their destination. Mm -hmm. What it takes to get to their destination. 
Now, many people today believe they can get to heaven, they can live any kind of life, they can do what they want to do, they can stay in sin, and still get to heaven. Now, Digga Malone, do you believe anyone can live in sin and still get to heaven? No. Now, sin is something that separates us from God and it separated the human family from God in the Garden of Eden. Now, I believe the Lord has stirred my heart, God, to remind us that we're not coming to church just to come to church. We're not serving the Lord just to serve Him for nothing at all. Saints of God and people of God, there is a rapture coming. The Lord Jesus will come again. We just sung the song. Someday our Lord will come again. Someday our prayers that seems in vain shall be answered from the plain. Someday, someday, some happy day. Now, the church, which is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, is on the earth right now. Now, the purpose of the church that they should be doing right now is getting themselves ready. Amen. Now, if you want to go on a vacation, at least you're going to pack your bags. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to pack it according to how many days you plan on spending. Now, when it comes to heaven and you call yourself a Christian, now, you're not packing a literal bag because you can't take clothes to heaven. But I want to know how many today is dressing up in righteousness? How many, as the, as the Bible said, love not the world? Neither the things that are in the world, for all that is, in, that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. John went on to say also that the world passed away. And as we go along, there are many information that I will impart unto you as we go along. Praise the Lord. But the rapture is coming. Now you say, preacher, when will it happen? I can't tell you, and I cannot give you a date when it will happen. Many preachers have told many people that Jesus is coming at a certain time on a certain date. Now, that is pride. How could you tell people when Jesus is coming and even Jesus don't know when he's coming? Jesus can't tell no preacher when he's coming because he don't know. So how brazen are some preachers to say, well, well, according to my calculation, Jesus will be here on September 24th uh, and go on a certain mountain and there will you see him. Praise the Lord. And how many have believed that? Uh, and come to find out there was one preacher that said he was coming at a certain time and when the people showed up there and he didn't come, he said, well, my, my calculations was wrong. So he said, let me give you another day. He gave the people another day, and guess what? He still didn't come. And where is that preacher today? Dead and gone. Praise the Lord. And how many he mislead uh, or misled uh, to a place believing that Jesus is coming at a certain time when nobody don't know when he's coming, but he is coming. Praise the Lord. Now, let's hear what the uh, angels have to say according to the apostles. Acts chapter number 1. Verse number 6 through 11. Acts chapter number 1, verses 6 through 11. Acts chapter number 1, verse 6 through 11. And I ask thee come alone to read. The former treaties have I made. All right, verse number 6. Acts chapter 1, verse number 6. When they therefore were come together. When they were therefore come together. They asked of him. They asked of him saying. Lord. Lord. 
wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? They asked Jesus a question. Israel. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom back to, to Israel. Israel? Now, the Jews recognize, amen, that there is a kingdom that God will set up on this earth. Now, we're not going to get into it tonight, but we will get into it later on. Remember this now. The first message that John the Baptist preached and the first message that Jesus preached was repent. For the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of God is at hand. In the Lord's Prayer, while Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer, part of that prayer said, Thy kingdom come. Jesus said, now when you pray, pray that God's kingdom come. Now in a kingdom, there must be a king. There is no kingdom without a king. And there is no kingdom a king can rule by himself. Have you ever heard of a kingdom with just a king alone? There must be people for him to rule over. So God had a kingdom in which he was set up, amen, at his own time on this earth. And the person to rule that kingdom is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who will be made what? King of kings and what? Lord of lords. So they said, well, Lord, why? Is it now the time to restore back the kingdom to Israel? Let's hear what Jesus said. And he said unto them, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know, It is not for you to know, The time, mm -hmm. Or the season, The time or the season, Which the Father hath put in our own power, uh, Which the Father hath put power. in his own power. No, God had that in hand. It's not up to man to dictate. It's not up to man to say, When the kingdom is going to come. You need to do is just believe God's word that it will come. Uh, and one day it will come. So he said, It's not to you to know of the time yes. and the season, or the season, uh, which the Father has put in, has his, put own in his own power. In other words, God control when it will happen. Amen. Nothing happened on this earth without God approval. Not even Satan can roam and do what he's doing without the approval of. Because remember now, God could abide Satan in the beginning. Just like the angelic hosts are reserved in everlasting chains, he could have also did the same thing to Satan. But to bring about his plan, he had to keep the devil loose. If God put Satan in the bottomless pit after he left heaven, then there would be no sin in the earth. He would not end up in the Garden of Eden. So God left him for a purpose because Satan will fulfill God's purpose. Remember now, God is the one that made him. Mm -hmm. Just like in the garden, let me just say this, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, there's a reason why God placed that tree there. If God never put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then Adam and Eve would never have a way of sinning. Do you follow me? Amen. Uh, there will never be a means for them to sin if the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not in the garden, but God put it there because he knew uh, that this was the way, amen, to entice the woman and her husband to disobey God and usher in sin. Now, it's just like a credit card, and I've said this before. When they send you a credit card, what is the instruction they give? Call the number to act. You have to call number to do what? Activate. So you can't use the card until you do what? Activate. Until you activate it. So no sin needed to be activated in the earth. Uh, and the means by which it was going to be activated, amen, was through their disobedience from eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So everything on this earth is in God's control. So keep on reading deep. But ye shall receive power. He said, now ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost. Has after come upon the Holy you. Ghost has come upon you. You have no power until after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes, you receive power. Read. And ye shall be witnesses 
unto both in Jerusalem. All right, you're going to be your witnesses both in Jerusalem and Judea. And in Samaria. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost parts. Unto the, the uttermost parts of the earth. All right, read. And when he had spoken these things. And when he had spoken these things. While they beheld. While they beheld. He was taken up. He was taken up. A cloud received him out of their sight. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven. While they looked steadfastly up into heaven as the Lord as began to ascend up into the clouds and into the heaven. Behold, two men stood by them. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now, I want to stop for a minute. Every time or most of the time you read about angelicals, most times they are dressed in white. You never hear of them wearing brown. Green. You never hear of them wearing purple or green or blue. They're always dressed in white. White is also the garment that the believers will wear. What is the purpose of white? The purpose of white, you understand, is called the robe of what? Righteousness. It represents righteousness. So when you see an angel dwelling in heaven, amen, they wear white to represent what? Righteousness. Praise the Lord. And the believers will also put on their robe, amen, which represents what? Righteousness. So these men in white apparel said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye what? Here, gazing up into heaven. Why are you gazing up into heaven? Uh, this same Jesus, that is what? Taken up from you. That is taken up from you. Unto heaven. Into heaven. Shall so come in like manner. Uh, the same way you see him go up. He shall so come in like manner. Uh, in so, the same manner as he go up. He the same manner he will come back. back again. So don't gaze up. He told you now to go back to Jerusalem. He's gone now, but he prepared you. Amen. So that you can move forward. But you need the Holy Ghost in order to move forward. So that is the next scripture to show us that even the angel said, this same Jesus that is taken up is what? He's coming back again. Now, I don't believe the angels told a lie. The angels don't lie. Because the angels receive instructions from God. And now where in the Bible have you ever read that God told a lie? The Bible said in Numbers, God is not a man. Uh, that he should lie, neither is he the what? The son of man that he should repent. So now, knowing that Jesus is coming again, some of us been saying, well, I've been hearing him coming ever since I was a little child. Uh, I'm coming to Sunday school. Now, I'm a great-grandmother, I'm a great-grandfather, and he still haven't showed up yet. So it must be that the story is not true. Still true. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go and talk to about the scoffers. Let's go now, amen, to 1 Peter. Believe 1 Peter and 2 Peter, chapter number 3. Give us a minute. First Peter three. Believe it's first Peter chapter number three. Or it might be second Peter. Second Peter chapter number three. First verse. Mm-hmm. This second epistle. This second epistle. Beloved. Beloved. I now write unto you. I now write unto you. In both which I stir up your pure minds. All right, by which I stir up your pure minds. By way of remembrance. All right, he's stirring up their mind by way of remembrance. He's reminding them, amen, of what is to come and some of the things that is happening and what the promises was made, amen, to the apostles. All right, 
read. That they may be mindful of the word. That they might be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets. Mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So Peter is reminding them now of what the holy prophets spoke of. Now the reason why they were called holy prophets, amen, because the Holy Ghost would move on them. And they were called holy prophets because they spoke the word of a holy God. Now the Holy Ghost did not live in the, in the prophets. It would move upon them. Uh, it would inspire them. Amen. You understand? To prophesy and to leave on record that which is to come. And many of the prophets, like Daniel, like Jeremiah, like Ezekiel, like Hosea, like Zephaniah, many of them spoke of the last days and many of them spoke of the coming of the Lord and also the rapture. So he spoke, amen, the words the apostles then spoke also. So we're going to find out now what is Peter saying. All right, read it. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That these should, that there shall come in the last days. There shall scoffers, come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lust. So now these people are walking after their what? Own lust. Now when you walk after your own lust, you can say anything and believe it's true. Whatever it makes you feel good. Uh, if it makes you feel good, thank you. Huh? That's what you believe. But these people are not walking after faith or by faith. They're walking after their own lusts. Read. Saying. Saying. Where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep. Since the fathers fell asleep. All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. All continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So now, what this group of people were doing was indoctrinating people and letting them know that the rapture is something that is a make-believe story. It's something that will not happen. To sow a seed of doubt. You see, Satan is smart. He knows how to deceive people. He's very subtle. And the way he deceives us is privily. Uh, he don't outright condemn certain things, but he know how to plant a seed. Now once that seed is planted, uh, someone will begin to meditate on it and water that seed. And that seed will grow. Now the seed that he wants to grow is the seed of what? Unbelief. Uh, if the devil can get you to believe that Jesus is not coming, he have you. And many today, he have them today because guess what? They don't believe that Jesus is coming. Because if they really believe that Jesus was coming, then you would see the fruits of it. Now let me bring it a little closer. People in the building today, in the church today, some of them don't even believe you're coming. Lord have mercy. They go to church, they go to Bible study, saints instruction, Sunday school. Brotherhood, sisterhood, all the other hoods they come up with, but they still don't believe he's coming. You said, Preach, you mean, tell me, people can be so faithful going to church, but don't believe he's coming? Yes. How do you know that? What fruits are they producing? None. Do you see any sign that they're making themselves ready? Do you know the church folks or the saints are supposed to live so every day? Amen. That the Lord in anticipation of his coming, that he can come at any time. You got to purify yourself. Uh, if you are a son or a daughter of God, every day you ought to be purifying yourself. Why should I purify myself? Because he is pure. Uh, you can't live any kind of life saying that Jesus is coming, but you're walking after your own lusts. Walking in disobedience. Just doing what you want to do. Just coming to church and be a bench warmer. Uh, you look like you're saying, you dress good on the outside. Long skirt. Uh, you ain't dressing in nothing tight. But guess what? Where is your heart? The Lord don't have control of your heart. All you're doing is serving. 
serving him from your lips. You're giving him lip service. Uh, and as the Bible said, these people draw nigh unto me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There are many people in the church building today, but they are not in the bride. They're not in the body. And if saints really believe that Jesus is coming, every day we're going to purify ourselves. And the Bible said, I write unto you that you sin not. Don't sin. But if you do sin, what must we do if we do sin? We got to confess that sin. We can't keep on believing it's all right to keep sinning and just sinning and don't confessing it, don't get it right, but then I'm still waiting for the Lord to come. Do you know you're waiting on the Lord in vain? You got to confess that sin. And let me say this, uh, you must acknowledge that sin. David in the book of Psalm 51, he said, I acknowledge my transgression. You must acknowledge that wrong. This is what has happened now, you understand? Iniquity, you understand, is just like cement. Uh, you mix that cement and after a while it gets hard. The more you keep on sinning, the more you keep on believing, and the Lord gives you such a mind that you think you're saved, but you're not saved. Uh, but you got to confess, David said, I acknowledge my transgression. And David said, my sins are ever. Now, every believer must make sure that your sin is before you. What does it mean your sins are before you? Meaning, you confess that sin. You got it right with the Lord. And if your sin is ever behind you, my friend, I want to give you some bad news. If your sin, if my sin ever stays behind me, I will never make it to that city called heaven. Praise the Lord. Because I can't go to heaven with sin. So we must not sin. Sin brings a what? Separation. We must be perfect. We must live a life of perfection. The Bible said, be ye perfect. Jesus said it like this. Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. God is perfect. And the body of Christ must be perfect. Now you say, well, preacher, you mean to tell me I got to be perfect? Uh, I got to live a life without sin? That's what perfection is. But you say, well, what if I make a mistake? If you make a mistake, I just said, just repent. Get that mistake right and correct it. Once you correct that mistake, now you are perfect all again. And if you make another mistake, then just get it right. If God didn't believe that we wouldn't sin, he would never leave in his word a way out for the believers when we sin. But if a believer sin. The way out is to confess that sin. And the Lord will do what? The blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, will what? Cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus will cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. It will take away that sin and it will put us back in a place that we are right with God. All right, read thee. For this there... For this willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the God of God the heavens were of old. Alright, so Peter said for this they are what? Willingly. Willingly are what? Ignorant. So these people walking around saying you understand that the coming of the Lord ain't going to happen. What type of folks are they? Ignorant. They're ignorant folks. Ignorant meaning lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Fail to believe what the scriptures say. Willingly. Uh, and, and they're willingly ignorant. You understand? It's not by chance they're ignorant. They're willingly ignorant. They just want to be ignorant and they choose not to believe the scriptures. They choose not to believe God. They choose to do what? Walk according to what? Their own loss. Uh, and you understand? Their loss have got them in a place that they fail to believe that what God's word say is true. Believers, let me say this. God never told a lie. 
The Bible said a virgin shall bring forth a child. Did it happen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. The Bible said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Did it happen? Amen. The Bible said in Hosea chapter 11, and said, out of Egypt have I called my son. Did God call Jesus out of Egypt? Yes. Did his parents flee into Egypt? Yes, they did. So scriptures are true. <laughs> uh, and if God said it, it will happen. Whether or not we in here or you out there fail to accept it, God don't need us for his word to be fulfilled. He got people that will fulfill his word. Just like the Lord said in the days of Elijah. Uh, Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only one left. Take my life. What in the word of God came to Elijah say, man of God, uh, you ain't the only one. He said, I got 7,000 who have not bowed their knees unto Baal. I got 7,000 that you don't know of. So when you feel like God needs you and he can't exist without and his plan can't go far without you. God got his bride. Huh? God got his people. There will be a bride. There will be those that will go in. I talk about the scripture, hold on to that, the parable that Jesus told uh, of the husband man, of the king, that made a, you understand, a marriage supper. And being his servants to go and invite those, uh, to tell those that were invited to come in. Did you know when he went out there, went out to let them know? The king sent word for you to come. They began to make excuses. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I'm so busy. Uh, that's what the world is today. The world is so busy, just doing their own thing. Uh, he was referring to Israel. They don't want to accept Jesus. Lord, we don't see you as what? Well, the Messiah. We're waiting on the true Messiah. So they came back and said, now, Lord, those that was bidden, uh, that had the invitation, they said they don't want to come. They got excuses. So what did he say now? Go out there uh, and find those that is willing to what? To come in because now, if God set up a hundred chairs in a building, there will be a hundred people to fill each chairs. Praise the Lord, or each chair. There will be a hundred people. So they went out and they been many to do what? Come in. And when they came back, they said, Master, we still got room. So the master said, oh, go out to the highways and byways and do what? Compel men to come in. Go tell the prostitute. Huh? Invite the prostitute. Let them know, you understand, there is what? A seat in God's kingdom for them. Go invite the Gentiles because the Jews don't want it so tell somebody else many people that there you're telling them about the coming of the Lord they don't want it they don't believe it will happen but guess what there are people that do want it That's right. and Jesus said all the sheep have I uh, which is not of this fold Jesus told the Jews I got other people if you think it's just you, it's not just you. Yes, salvation is of the Jews first, but remember this now, God was going to bring the Gentiles into this great salvation. So it's not just about us. God will have people to carry out his will. All right, read thee. All right. For, if they, for this willingly are ignorant of... They are ignorant of that by the what? The word of God. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, what does it mean, the earth standing out of the water and in the water? The late Bishop Bailey put it this way. There are islands that are sitting on water. And there are countries that are not what? Sitting on water. So the earth, you understand, of old was where? Standing where? In the water and out of the water. Remember now, the Bible said what? The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof, the world and what? They that dwell therein. For he had what? Founded it where? Upon the sea. Uh, and he did what? He established it what? Upon the flood. 
the dry land the Lord called earth. Uh, and the gathering together of the body of water is what? God called them seas. All right, read. Whereby the world that then was mm -hmm. being overflowed with water. Being overflowed with water perished. What word perished? In the days of Noah. When God told Noah to preach and to let the people know that there will be what? Rain is coming. Uh, a flood is coming. But what did those people do? They didn't believe no. Uh, we've never seen it before. So if I haven't seen it before, it will not happen. That is why the Bible said, we don't walk by sight. Uh, we walk by faith. Faith lets you know it's there even though you don't see it. And if you see it, then you don't need faith. Uh, you don't need to hope for something that you can look upon. But you hope for something that you have not laid your eyes on, but you believe by faith it is there and it will happen. Praise the Lord. Read. But the heavens and the earth, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, which are now, by the name, by the same word, are what? Are kept in store. Mm-hmm. Reserved, Reserved to the, on the, the fire, fire against, against the